Here's a story from a Quebec newspaper called Le Devoir. Trudeau évite de se prononcer sur le droit de caricaturer Mahomet. What do you think of my French accent? In English, that means Trudeau avoids pronouncing on the rights to caricature Mohammed caricatures and to draw cartoons. Now, I'm going to run this story through Google Translate now so you're not punished by my terrible accent. I'm going to read the Google Translate version. Translation's not perfect, but it works well enough. I just wanted to show you the original French version first. It's written by Helen Bazzetti, who is based in Ottawa, because this was an exchange in Parliament. Had a press scrum, so there's no excuse why this wasn't in every media outlet across Canada. I mean, there are literally hundreds of accredited journalists who are based in Ottawa, including dozens from the big legacy media like CBC and CTV, and none of them covered this. We would have, but we'd been banned from the Parliamentary Press Gallery. China's state broadcaster, Xinhua, is allowed in, but not us. Our competitors have colluded to ban us. You can see why, because they prefer if certain stories are not told. Well, Helen Bazzetti apparently didn't get the memo yesterday because she did, in fact, cover the story. Here's what it says, translated from Google, uh, by Google from French. While a new Islamist, that's a word you don't see in English papers, while a new Islamist attack afflicts France, federal politicians are reluctant to call the right for anyone to caricature the Muslim prophet Muhammad. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has avoided answering the question, while the leader of the NDP believes that we must avoid unnecessarily fueling hatred. Hmm. There's a lot of words in there you would never see in an English language newspaper. Good for Helen Bazzetti for saying those things. In French, though, in Quebec only, because Quebec is actually less politically correct about Islam. They take their culture more seriously since they're worried about the French-Canadian culture melting away in North America. So they fight for their French-Canadian culture, their, their history, their language, their norms which includes very particular thoughts about religion and secularism. And then, of course, the recent attacks in France have been in France. And likely everyone in Quebec has watched the French news in their native tongue. So the opposite of the cowardly English-Canadian press gallery. I'll read some more. The Nice attack, which resulted in three deaths, was carried out Thursday morning by a young man shouting, Allahu Akbar! It is still unclear for the moment whether, as in the case of the beheading of Samuel Patti, the gesture was made in response to the publication of Cartoons of Mohammed, which became relevant again with the ongoing trial of the supporters of the attack on Charlie Hebdo. But the question was nonetheless put to Mr. Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh, should we, in the name of Western values, publicly assert that it is permissible to make fun of religion, including caricaturing Mohammed? There's a lot of fair questions in there obvious questions to me, which is why it's so surprising that any Canadian journalist would ask them. Good for her, I say again. And look at this. Look at the boldness of this next line. Asked three times. Jack Meet Singh refused to answer directly. The NDP leader has repeatedly reiterated his faith in free speech while adding that we should not attack others unnecessarily. You have to stand up for freedom of expression, even if you don't agree with someone, Singh said. But, hang on, there's no but after that, but he added one. But also, if we want to have peace in society, we must also recognize that the freedom to express our thoughts is not a freedom to expressly create divisions and hatred, he added. That there are limits to expressing hatred or promoting hatred towards others. It is a limit that we have accepted as a society because it is important for living together. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Which is it? Do we have free expression or not? Or only if you don't create divisions? Isn't every decision in life a division? Isn't every controversy a division? I mean, do we have separation of mosque and state or not? It's a yes or a no. Are we allowed to draw pictures of Jesus and to mock him? Yes or no? There's no maybe. How about for Mohammed? These are yes or no questions. In Parliament, a vote is called calling for a division. It's what democracy is built on. That's why we have elections. So we can talk about things, according to Jack Meet Singh, but nothing divisive. That means we can talk about nothing. And why can't you hate a religion, if we're going to use the word hate? I don't recommend hate. I don't prescribe hate. But if someone feels that human emotion, why can't they feel that way? 
And why can't they express it peacefully? But why can't they express their emotion? A religion might have a rule that you cannot criticize that religion. All right. I would say that's not a very robust faith, I must say, but fine. But how is that internal rule of Islam applicable to the rest of us who are not Muslim? If you want to be Muslim or Jewish or Christian or Sikh or Buddhist or a Scientologist or a vegetarian, help yourself. But why should the rest of us have to follow your particular group's rules too? I'll read some more. Mr. Singh stressed that it was difficult for him to measure the impact of a cartoon of Muhammad since he is not a Muslim. But I can say that it is essential to find a way to achieve our ultimate goal of living together. Well, there are various ways to live together. One is as equals, peacefully under a common rule of law. There's other ways too. I mean, under Sharia law, it is true, even infidels can live under Islamic Sharia law if they agree to submit to Islam and abide by certain strictures. For example, to pay an infidel tax called the jizya. Uh, I visited Bethlehem. For centuries, they were allowed to have Christians in Bethlehem. They just had to uh, live under the laws of Islam. Absolutely, Islam allows Jews and Christians to still live there. You just wouldn't want to live that way, just like prison wardens and prisoners have found a way to live together. Yeah, it's just not equal, is it? Secular Muslims disagree with the stabbers. Secular Muslims, of whom there are many in France and many in Quebec, despise this cowardice in the face of terrorists and Islamists. But Singh and Trudeau are practiced at caving into the most extreme elements and ignoring the modern elements. Let me read some more. Mr. Trudeau was even more evasive in limiting himself to condemning the French attack. He did not say a word about the freedom to caricature. Quote, we absolutely condemn these heinous, unacceptable terrorist attacks. There is absolutely nothing to justify this violence. It is unjustifiable. We stand by all the French people, said the Prime Minister. He added that it was necessary, however, at the same time, quote, to recognize that these criminals, these terrorists, these murderers, do not in any way represent Islam or Muslims. Okay, got it. So he'll say the murderers don't reflect Islam. He'll say that. They say they do. They shout Allah Akbar when they commit the murders. As I told you the other day, the local mosque actually organized a protest against the school where the cartoons had been shown. The imam at that local mosque actually texted back and forth with the murderer of the school teacher. But sure, noted Quranic scholar Justin Trudeau says that these have nothing to do with Islam. Got it. And he would know. But if that is true, then why doesn't he stand up for the right to draw Mohammed cartoons since he disavows those who claim it's a crime deserving of execution. If you say that Islam does not kill infidels, why are you not willing to say that freedom of speech includes drawing cartoons of Muhammad? That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.